Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Office Hours. Uh, this is kind of a special session, really our most popular session we do, um, which is where we have demos from our global virtual hackathon. Most of you know we had our hackathon back on September 22nd. Um, many, many thanks to Axel Faust for who really kind of heads up the whole hackathon. Uh, we had record setting numbers. We had about 50 different people hacking from, I think we had 20 some call in locations. <clears throat> and then we had 12 plus projects. It's been a, a ton of projects, a ton of people. We really enjoyed it. Um, so we're going to see demos from those today. Uh, I'm not going to take a lot of time with announcements because we are short on time for this. Um, my name is Kristen Gastaldo. I'm the community manager for Alfresco. Just so you guys know, we do have a couple huge things coming up. Uh, we did announce DevCon back at our hackathon. So DevCon will be happening January 16th through 18th in Lisbon, Portugal. Right now we have a website up, devcon.alfresco.com, where you can sign up for email notifications. The full website will be out probably within the next week where we'll have some more details on logistics. Um, our call for papers is open. We have a ton of papers in so far. We are looking for a ton more. So if you have some thoughts about what you'd like to present at DevCon, please go ahead and submit your paper. There are details in the community. There's a DevCon 2018 section from the Connect dropdown. You should be able to find that page and see a blog from Francesco about call for papers. We're using a site called Paper Call. Um, it's really easy to submit your paper. We'd love to see what you guys would like to speak about. Just so you know, full session speakers are comped tickets to DevCon. So that will get you into DevCon for free. Our actual next event will be October 11th. That is our next Tech Talk Live. We're going to be joined by Tony De La Fuente, who will be talking about Alfresco security. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Francesco now. And here we go. Thank you very much, as usual, Kristen. Uh, just another reminder, if you are in London area on Tuesday, next Tuesday, the 10th, uh, join us uh, to have a beer together. We have a bunch of engineers that we will be happy also to have uh, uh, to, to do some discussion around Alfresco technology and uh, other various stuff. Also, the DevCon contribution. Don't want to waste my time, I'm Francesco Corti. Your time, I'm Francesco Corti, uh, Product Evangelist for Alfresco. Thank you to everyone attending the hackathon. It has been probably one of the most uh, attended hackathon uh, uh, in the recent uh, story of Alfresco. We are very happy, and this is because of your attendance. Thank you again. Uh, I think that it's the right time to leave the scene to the projects. And uh, before the project, I would like to explicitly thank you, Axel Faust, for setting up the uh, great hackathon and uh, leaving the mic to Axel. Yeah, thank you, Francesco. Um, so just to uh, round up the introduction, my name is Axel Faust. I'm a member of the Order of the Bee and one of the active members of the community uh, since 2012, essentially. And just to give you a bit of background information about hackathons, just to uh, those people that uh, have never heard of hackathons in Alfresco before, uh, this is basically a tradition that goes back to one of the first DEF cons that uh, Alfresco has done. I think it started in DEF CON 2011 in uh, London. Uh, and has continued since then in two forms. We have the presence uh, hackathons in the conference locations, for example, in Lisbon in January next year, we will have a uh, hackathon, of course. And since 2014, we've also had these kinds of events, which we are now showing the demos or in a couple of seconds, uh, the global virtual hackathon, which has been an annual tradition since 2014. So it's been the fourth year in a row. And as uh, Francesco and Kristen said, uh, this year we had uh, the most attendance uh, since uh, we started the event, I think we started uh, in 2014 with about 40 uh, attendance. This year we have 60, so we increase it by 50%. Of course, uh, attendance varies over time depending on when it's scheduled and what people have uh, in terms of uh, scheduling conflicts in their own line of work. But usually we have about 25 to 40 attendance. Uh, with this trend. So without further ado, we should go to the uh, project demonstration because we had a lot of projects given that we had 60 attendants uh, in the hackathon this year. And uh, we will basically use the community platform uh, to go over the projects uh, and showcase them. And the first project is actually one project that I did uh, as part of this hackathon. Let me just see that I can share my screen appropriately. Yeah, should be in this one, and hopefully when I switch back to Firefox, it should be available. Um, just a quick question, uh, everyone seeing this, hopefully? We see you. 
Okay, fine. So uh, the project that I did uh, in collaboration with uh, some uh, engineers from Alfresco, so Martin Müller and uh, Stefan Kopf joined me in this project during the hackathon, was to deal with the uh, trash management in Alfresco. And everyone who, of you who uses the Alfresco uh, tool or Alfresco share application knows that basically trash management uh, is a bit limited in terms of user uh, interface, user experience. Uh, basically, uh, every person has via their profile access to the trash can of the items that they have deleted in the past. Uh, administrator can see all deleted items. And all those items, uh, you only have the name to go by as well as some information of where it was stored before. Uh, but you don't really have an option to look into what else has been deleted. For example, here we have a folder that's been deleted and you can't really look what else was contained in that folder. Search and uh, generally you can only restore the top level items. And the project that I uh, started together with uh, Martin and Stefan uh, was an, an attempt to improve the user experience uh, by creating a new page, uh, let's call it a trash can browser, uh, based on iCow within Share, which allows us to basically uh, search, <coughs> excuse me, uh, to query for deleted items within the archive store of Alfresco using both names as well as keyword search, so using any kind of FTS query, and then being able to actually look at Axel, I think we've lost your vocals. You have lost, I think we've lost audio, lost audio. Well, now oh. you're back. Okay, I can still hear, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, my network is a bit spotty, so I hope this uh, will be the only time. Um, yes, so one thing that we've added is the ability to preview documents uh, within the trash can browser so that you can actually see uh, what uh, you have deleted and what you might want to restore to check if it's the right element. Um, also, we plan to improve on the metadata display and provide actions, for example, to restore a partial graph from a deleted node hierarchy. So if you've deleted a large folder with large many of uh, children, then just pick some of those contents. Um, again, this is just the starting point of the project. It's available on GitHub uh, via my uh, GitHub profile and it's linked in the community platform. So if anyone wants to check it out, feel free to do so. Um, at the moment, it's not really much. It, uh, it's basically just the UI to uh, allow me to filter it uh, dynamically using Solar 6 in the background with some customizations um, and yeah, it's uh, a starting point for future development. And I think that's about it for my five minutes that I have available uh, to showcase this. Uh, the biggest difficulty we had with this project was mainly figuring out how to actually make the archive searchable with Solar and dealing with uh, limited features, for example, with regards to those previews, which is uh, not possible in standard fresco. So before we go to the next project, we have time for one or two short questions for each of those projects that we are going to showcase. So if there's any question right now, uh, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, we would switch to the next person. No question from RC channel and uh, YouTube channel at the moment. I will tell you if we will have. OK. So and the yeah. quick question. I, I, is the were the changes uh how significant were the changes from the default alfresco is it add-on level changes or did you have to change the core of alfresco in order to get the thumbnails to work, uh, the search to work? Um, for the thumbnails i actually had to change a core bean uh, with an extended class uh, to fix the check that was implemented there it's an old uh, it's a workaround basically since uh, that's been in alfresco since 2009 and it's not been touched since so it's uh, this is a core change but the other aspects, for example, managing permissions uh, to actually make it solar searchable, which it isn't by default, uh, uh, is an add-on level uh, extension. Then you also have configuration on the solar side to make search actually work, especially if you are not a native English user, because uh, solar search is a bit difficult with multiple locales. At least in solar six and solar four, it was better. So, but this is an ongoing issue in the community. Very interesting. Thanks. Yeah. Cool project. Thanks. 
Um, yeah, so the next uh, person in line for the presentation would be uh, Mark Tielemans for his project on sent uh, as email attachment or sent email from document. I'm just looking if he's already on the call, um, but it doesn't look like he's joined yet. Um, so I think it might be best to switch to someone who already has. That is Michael. Michael. Well, uh, Mikel, uh, I don't know the correct pronunciation. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have the mic. Uh, Mikel, sorry. Uh, but uh, I, I was following the the projects and teams page on the on the community, and I, so I am a little bit lost in the in the project order. So I, I just uh, I think you are talking about uh, the um, classification and and. And the delivery uh, project that is is being made by Kinsop, but I can is delivery code documents folder as a side action. That that's the one that you are, are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, no problem, Michael. Feel free to choose a project if you have already. Uh, otherwise, oh. we can move ahead. Don't no problem. No, no. no so, sorry, sorry. It's just because uh, I'm looking to a wrong uh, list. Sorry about that. So I can just let me uh, just uh, share my screen. And yes, perfectly. Yeah, okay. So this is the project that uh, uh, Daniel was uh, Daniel Fernandez was working on in the hackathon, and is a kind of uh, something to classify uh, configuration and then do some work with that uh, result. And there is also a use case implemented that we are uh, actually using in the company, which is to deliver a page check for all the employees in Kinsoft by mail. And the action is actually, is actually a repo action in this case that is uh, taking all this Muppet uh, configuration to, to make decision in the repo to deliver the, the sensitive uh, document hold in the repository to the, to the, uh, to the good employee. <laughs> so it, it, it doesn't go to the, to the ground down, ground one. So this is the mainly the project, and is uh, is designed to be uh, as flexible uh, as possible to fit every use case you you may be think, thinking on. So uh, you can reach Daniel in GitHub uh, to to get some more info because I didn't work on this project, so I don't have much many more details about it. That's it. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Michael. I think Mark has joined now in this call. So uh, unless there are questions for Michael, uh, we can switch over to Mark for his project. I just want to ask Michael, how many members of your team at Keensoft participate in the hackathon? Was I think I counted five? <laughs> yeah, five to six, because uh, also Juan, Juan Antonio Matute was uh, helping on, actually in this project with, uh, with the the pay slip, you said pay check, sorry, or pay slip, pay check. Pay check. Uh, Either way, yeah. Uh, delivery. So yeah, something like six people. But uh, I I always heard about this project, and I have received the the pay check, so I know it's working. <laughs> <laughs> but, but never, but never worked on it. So. Very good. It was great to see some new members of your team joining. Uh, you brought a, a a range of abilities from. Uh, people that were very senior know Alfresco really well to some newer people who are able to ask questions. And it's always fun to see that that collaboration. Yeah. Also, we grab a, our assistant administrator for another project. We were we will talk uh, later uh, about the, the data table partition, but it, it's, it's just what you said. It was a, a funny interaction between different people and half of the people maybe and never heard about Alfresco <laughs> before. So very, very nice. Great. Late. Yeah, we had a, little, a lot of newcomers to Alfresco and general to the community this time around with all those hacker rooms, not just uh, for Keensoft, but also for Mima.com, for Concentric, and Ostrava. Uh, we also had a hacker room. So quite a lot of people joining there. So um, Mark, if you want to show your project or the results of your project, uh, you can take over and share your screen. Which is the next, uh, Axel, so we can uh, yeah. ask him or her to join? 
Yeah, uh, the next one would be, I think, David Anton uh, regarding image phase analyzer or the user managed metadata extraction on text PDF uh, is the one that I have next on my list. Okay, so David, if you can join, uh, that's fine. Thank you, Axel. Sorry, Mark. Sure, no problem, Francesco. All right, I'll uh, just share my screen for a moment. You can see it now, right? Yes. Right, so what we did is uh, we built an add-on for Alfresco Share. It's a very small add-on that uh, essentially only um, adds a, a sort of custom action uh, for multiple nodes that allows a user to send an email uh, from Alfresco using one or more documents. Um, and the difference with the already uh, existing sharing capabilities is that this time around, it's possible to actually send the email file as an attachment um, to an email address. I can demo that in, in just a couple of seconds. Just, uh, as you can see, there's, there's a button to send an email attachment. Um, you, can, you can enter an email address here. You can, um, by, um, by using a comma. You have multiple, uh, multiple recipients. You can, uh, you, can, you can enter a subject line, which is uh, my test subject for an email. And because we've heard of um, of people actually um, wanting an, an easy access button like this just for sending links instead of email attachments, we can also um, check this box for sending links only, and it will remove the attachment. So um, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll check that for now. We can send the email. It takes a little bit of time, which is uh, something to look into. Come to my inbox now. Um, there we go. There's uh, there's the email. This this body for the email comes from an email template in Alfresco Share, which is um, just like the the usual email capabilities, fully customizable. Um, and yeah, I, I know I checked the checkbox for um, uh, not sending attachments. That's something I'm working on right now. So the attachment's still there. Uh, there's also a link to the file in Alfresco, so it, it uses the external sh uh, link to Share, which is uh, well, I'm running on localhost, so it's not starting this time. Uh, so you can, well, you can see it also came through my uh, my second email address. Uh, it looks almost the same. And uh, yeah, that's that's basically it. So um, we have a bit of a roadmap for this. It was a small team. It was just uh, just two people um, working on this add-on. So we have only this, and uh, we have a bit of a roadmap. And if you're interested, of course, you're welcome to help us out with that. Um, It'll add on, and we've built it, and there's lots of stuff that we can also do with it to make it better. But for now, it's just sending emails as email attachments from Alfresco. So yeah, that's basically it. Thank you, Mark. Um, I've seen in your GitHub that uh, you've created a custom or separate action for sending the email than the one that's already in Alfresco. Are there any plans to maybe contribute uh, your enhancements you made back to the core product um, in the future? Uh, I think since especially uh, the, there might be a bit of overlap between what's already available in the default action and what your action provides, handling and all these uh, the related stuff regarding sender and uh, group management, for example. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, there used to be an action, action executor, if that's what you're referring to, um, in, in the source, in the code base. Uh, that was actually used to trick a form into showing because um, this, this multi-select menu here um, it's you define it in XML like it's custom actions, like the regular custom actions, but it doesn't actually listen to all the types of actions to trigger. So we had to do a bit of trickery to get that form to show there. Uh, actually, I've actually made that a little bit better and, and removed that custom action executor. Um, what we have right now is just, just a service uh, beam that manages all the, um, the Java sending. And I think there is a bit of overlap there, definitely, um, in that the Java mail sender service is used just like Alfresco does. Um, and it's only the part where we actually attach the uh, the binary files, which is here. That's actually the only real new part to it. So um, uh, yeah, I, I, I guess that would definitely be possible to add that to the existing surface and and uh, you know apply that to the um, or add that to the uh, core services. Yeah, because I remember I've done similar things in different projects. As you said, it's a common request from customers. And sure, I know yeah. that a lot of people have done something similar in the past. And uh, well, contributing to Alfresco has not been as easy in the past. But now with the new contribution process, I think Richard would uh, 
like to point that out, it should be easier in the future, and this could be something that could be put back in. We have shiny yes, new right. GitHub projects waiting for pull requests. OK, thank you, Mark. Um, next up would be uh, David Anton. Um, I don't know which of your projects you actually want to show, so I'll leave it to you and give the mic over to you and uh, look forward to your project. Axel, okay. do you know which is the pro? Sorry, David, do you know which is the next one? So the next one is cool. Philip Bruska uh, with the health repository okay. add-on. So, Philip, okay. if you're listening in and uh, uh, hear us, please join uh, for the next. Okay, David, go ahead. Okay, uh, I, I'm here with Bea and Michal, the other members of the the team. And we are going to present, uh, I'm going to share the screen, the, the project about the image uh, photo analyzer. And um, the principal uh, objective of the project is uh, that you can upload a photo and automatically uh, the Alfresco extracts the information about the photo and uh, show something like this with uh, meta metadata information about the photo. Mm, this is uh, developed with a behavior that uh, integrates, integrates with uh, Microsoft Azure and uh, the metadata that uh, this uh, integration can uh, extract is the number of persons, the, the ages of the of the people in the photo, the gender, the, the color of the of the hair. Also, if you have uh, facial hair, all the emotions and accessories, for example, uh, glasses or sunglasses or or a head. And uh, to um, to uh, customize it is uh, so easy to to add the properties uh, in the Alfresco Global Properties. You only need to to add a subscription key uh, of Azure, and the other properties it's uh, optional too because uh, these are the list of information uh, are you going to extract. So uh, go to show the 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 details. Uh, we uploaded uh, some photos and uh, we are going to show you the, the results. This is a girl, for example, and the photo shows only one person for the age uh, or about 23 years old and her, uh, her emotion is uh, so happy. So this is an example. Also, um, we can have uh, a photo with a lot of people and the results is uh, a list of different ages uh, for all the all the people in the photo and uh, the different type of, of emotion that, that you, uh, you can see in the photo and also uh, glasses and, and uh, headwear. Another example is uh, an angry man and uh, with uh, beard, uh, moustache and sideburns. And this is another example with uh, gray hair. And this is a curious photo <laughs> for a baby. And the result is uh, with uh, zero years. And also, uh, we customize the, the search. And then uh, we can select the, the type of, uh, of gender or hair that we can uh, or we want to, to search, for example, if, if, you want, if we want to uh, know how many people uh, of, uh, of the gender uh, of men are in the, in the repository, we can make the search and then we, we have the results. Uh, wait a moment, because the query is a bit slow, I don't know why. I don't know why it's... In any case, when you check, David, we are we are receiving in the RC channel. Congratulations for this project; really appreciate it. Okay, so this is the the result, but I don't know why it's going a bit slow. So this is uh, mainly the 
the project that that we develop on the on the hackathon and this is the the guy with with this type of of emotion and this is all I have one question. Uh, so first of all, uh, a couple of uh, very, really positive uh, feedback on that. Uh, can, can you br uh, briefly uh, explain uh, in this uh, solution how much is related on the um, service size of Alfresco? So how much of them are web script or something that is inside the core repository part and some, how much of this project is related to the front end? And related uh, to share instead of, uh, for example, the icons uh, and the uh, and, uh, and the definition of the metadata values and so on. Okay, so um, the backend part of of this add-on it's a behavior that uh, connects with uh, Microsoft Azure, and uh, when you upload a photo, uh, the behavior uh, starts automatically. It's uh, on create node action. And uh, also the front end part, it's uh, only an FTL and configures uh, uh, from a param about uh, the type of emotion or the uh, type of hair that, that uh, comes to the, to the front part. Really nice, congratulations. A uh, quick question, why did you pick Azure's classification service instead of some other uh, cloud services? Is it um, familiarity or a specific feature? Uh, we, we have two, two ideas to, to use uh, uh, Azure, was the, the first one, and also uh, Angel Borroy uh, recommend us to, to integrate with uh, Google API, but uh, we, we decided to use uh, Azure because it was uh, our first uh, uh, idea. But uh, for future versions, we can integrate with uh, Google API or, or something like that. It's interesting to see the, the relative strengths of the different services. Very cool. Thanks okay. for the experiment. Okay. Thank you, David. Um, Next project would be from Philip Brusker or from the uh, Tieto guys in Ostrava about the healthy repository add-on. The project after that, uh, I think, would be Arthur Boroy uh, speaking for Kinsoft regarding the alpha properties partitioning of the table. Okay, hello everybody. This is Philip. Can you hear me properly? Yes, perfectly, Philip. Okay, great. So I even prepared. Uh, presentation, but since I should be quick, I will skip most of the things which are mentioned here. I hope you can see my screen. Is it visible? Yeah, I yes. suppose so. Okay, yeah. great. So, uh, yeah, uh, since we are a team of uh, eight persons working with Alfresco in Tieto, uh, we didn't have, let's say, easy easy task so we created something something bigger and uh, we wanted to combine also system administrators as developers so in the end we decided to follow our Luis Sabaceras a uh, really good blog about Alfresco best practices uh, he mentioned few recommendations uh, which should be followed in each repository for example each node or folder should not contain more than for example several thousand of nodes inside or about uh, folder hierarchy depth so you shouldn't have more than 15 levels of folder in your repository uh, other recommendations is for example about nested groups so you shouldn't have more than five groups uh, we simply divided tasks to several people and uh, implemented everything on on uh, alfresco site so currently there is nothing for uh, share and let's go to the demo. So give me a second. Okay, hopefully you can see my uh, Chrome. So yes, perfect. you can see there. Yeah, great. So there is a new section, uh, healthy add-on. Uh, currently there are three tabs: folder hierarchy, uh, which is basically used for uh, this node count. So we are going through 
a whole repository and trying to find folders which contains, uh, for example, more than 1,000 nodes inside. In this case, we have two folders which contain more than 3,000 nodes. And since we are do doing already recursion, we combine those two tasks with uh, folder depth. So uh, we can see that, for example, site two has uh, quite uh, many folders in, in nested. And uh, yeah, if we go below, you can see also site three, four, and so on. And now we can also check. Yeah, and of course you can list between those jobs. So if you can see different results, it means since uh, basically data under the hood are still the same, I simply executed with different parameters. And uh, other things uh, which can be seen on the group hierarchy. Again, here you can list uh, between jobs. So you can see how your uh, nested groups are behaving in the, in the past. So uh, yeah, this is about it. Uh, we can even try to uh, run some web script. It is also done by job, but you can of course run it automatically by web script. So now I'm executing this ACL hierarchy. So it means uh, nested groups. I will receive node dev. So it will end with 5a. And I suppose it should be loaded pretty soon here. Yeah, so this is, let's say the output from the latest job. And the same applies, of course, for folder hierarchy. So if we need to run it, we simply specify parameters uh, for which it should be executed. And after some time, we will see a results here. Yeah, so in short, this is it. Uh, I should mention that uh, this project is not, let's say, completed. So I don't <laughs> recommend that to use it in, in a real environment at the moment. And uh, yeah, I also listed a few things which could be implemented or added in the future, maybe in a hackathon, which will happen on on uh, uh, Portugal on January. Yeah, this is linked to Git. And since it was a really good event, I really liked that. I also took a few photos here. <laughs> yeah, so nice that's, to see. Yeah, thank you for that. Any questions? Um, I was about to ask you regarding the source code because I didn't see it listed in the community platform. So if you could put that link that you had on your last slide uh, in the community platform, that would be appreciated so that everyone else can find uh, your project uh, after the session and look yeah. at it and maybe help you complete it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, of course, I completed this presentation and basically we also did other, uh, let's say, features. Uh, to be presentable uh, on the today and the date before today. So yeah, I will update everything on community. So it will be available there. Thank you. And uh, Vitis, I'm probably mispronouncing your name, but Vitis Slav's on your team in yeah. the Czech Republic, right? Yeah, 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 he, yeah. he was, yeah. yeah. So he was responsible for, let's say backend part, I was responsible for, uh, for results, for displaying results, so for front end. And how much of your team was new to Alfresco when you joined the hackathon? Uh, well, we currently, we are eight persons, but uh, there, there were four persons which are pretty new there. So yeah, or did I catch question properly? Yeah, that is exactly my question. Pretty cool that you were able to bring so many new uh, developers and, and teach them so much. And what time did your beer run out? You guys were in the office pretty late. <laughs> Yeah, so we we finished around 10 p.m. Uh, the work, but then we we go to pub. So yeah, it was a long night. Yeah, yeah. really cool, uh, Adon. I, I I think it would fit in really well with the order of the beast support tools. Um, it, it is an interesting set of checks that that would be good to put into that larger tool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So for anyone who doesn't know about the order of the B support tools, this was one of the add-ons that was created in the last virtual hackathon in uh, 2016. Uh, it's now been, uh, it was a personal project then, was now moved into the order of the B. 
and it's also available for contribution. And uh, the fact that you've already started with extending the repository tier administration uh, tool makes it easy to potentially merge those two or integrate in some form or another, even if it's just an extension that sits as a different link in the same UI. Uh, it's just sit nicely side by side, essentially. OK. So thank you for that project uh, demonstration. Um, as I said before, the next project would be the node properties table partitioning, uh, also by Keysoft. Um, but I don't see Angel uh, joining. Um, so I'm asking Mikkel uh, if he wants no, to take that. Angel will, will not join. Yeah, I, I, I can take that. Uh, he, he's afraid uh, he wanted to, to be here. But, yeah. But, uh, before you, he before it. you start, just for the next person so that you can join in time, the next project after that would be the in-flight workflow ICO dashlet uh, by Rupesh uh, Savalia. I hope I haven't butchered that last name, uh, but Rupesh, uh, if you're listening in, please join so that you can take over when Mikkel is done. So now, Mikkel, uh, over to you. OK, thank you, Axel. So there's no too much to say, because uh, as uh, Angel was uh, willing to be here to explain all the, the bits of this project, because he's actually using this in a real environment right now uh, uh, in some kind of uh, performance problem that we, we, we faced in one client, which was uh, having a, a big growth in Alfresco Global Properties table uh, with a big ratio between uh, how many metadata per node it was. So we started to think in a, in a solution for this problem and this is mainly a, a cell script that, uh, that has all the, 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 the investigation and all the, the work that Angel has done in this path. So I, I know that it has uh, a lot of functions that uh, are basically uh, now supporting PostgreSQL, but uh, he's planning to, to make this bigger and he's having a, a very good uh, feedback from the client. So, uh, I think uh, it's going to be a, a very, a very nice uh, tool for us in uh, in next months. So now we are now uh, trying to finish and finish. As I, as I said, we are now uh, uh, having this feedback from the client. So hopefully, Angel can explain you a little bit more on the years channel and also on chat and community. If everyone is interested on this project and, and wants to. To, to run it, uh, just uh, contact Angel because, uh, before doing it in, in production. But I think you should be, should be all right. And that's pretty all. Yeah, thank you, Mikkel. Um, I especially like table partitioning. Uh, since I did, uh, if anyone here attended Beacon, last Beacon, I did a presentation on the performance of the uh, node tree of the DBAFTS uh, functionality, the transaction metadata queries. And partitioning the alpha node properties table was one of the key aspects, especially for larger systems where you have a lot of skewed data sets, for example, have a lot of properties with unique node refs or with unique identifiers can really mess up the performance of your database, your database statistics, and partitioning the table as properties is a really efficient way to speed that up and to keep growing uh, your data set uh, while still keeping tree time at a low uh, beyond the million, uh, couple of million or tens of millions of documents. So it's really something that we looked into. And uh, well, if I would have time, I would potentially collaborate on that and try to add some uh, partitioning based on metadata, for example, on specific properties into specific tables, not just on a node basis. But it's a really interesting project. Glad, glad to hear you, you will co contribute. <laughs> okay, so if there's, if there aren't any other questions for Mikkel, uh, again, as you said, uh, you can always contact Angel via IRC or via other means uh, where you can find him. Uh, for detailed questions, uh, obviously, you can also check the GitHub project itself and uh, raise issues there if you have something that you want to discuss. Po positive mm -hmm. feedback and, and congratulations for, from the RC channel for this project to access. Sorry. Yeah, sure, no problem. Uh, good that you monitor that because I don't, I'm not doing that at the moment. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so as I said, the next project uh, is Rupesh uh, Savaya. Yeah. I hope I pronounced it correctly or yeah, yeah, yeah. At least somewhere close. Um, 
Before I give it over to you, the project after that would be the Salesforce integration with Alfresco Process Services, which is Francesco Malagrino from Alfresco. So Francesco, please join and Rupesh, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Excel. Uh, I, we, uh, we as an Rupesh participated in Alfresco Hackathon uh, for the idea of uh, in having a dashlet, an ICO dashlet for uh, in-flight workflow. And uh, the dashlet uh, is basically uh, for the use case in which, like, for example, if a task is assigned to a specific user and that specific user is gone for leave, uh, for example, 10 or 20 days, then for 10, 20 days, that task will be in an idle state. So in order to, you know, overcome this issue, what we have, uh, what we have developed is uh, in flight workflow dashlet. So for example, if a user is on uh, leave or something, so that specific task can be assigned to some other user or can be you know can uh, admin can act on behalf of that specific user the features are is like user admin user will be able to see the task and uh, the status of the task and uh, will be user will be assigned the task user will be able to see the workflow task and instances and it will be able to act and the future announcement will be the search capability for the in-flight task within a dashlet and configurable dashlet columns now let's move to the uh, demo demonstration of this uh, this dashlet so in this way it will it will uh, it will show up the uh, the list of tasks and uh, if we take example of review references task so it is having a total six columns so first three columns are representing the workflow uh, workflow instances uh, workflow instances specific columns and the other three are specific to you know uh, the task specific column so task id and workflow message workflow priority all these we have shown and one more column last column is for reassigning so with the help of by clicking on this what we can do we can select a user from here for example i select uh, pradeep so currently this task is assigned to rupesh now the moment i click on assign it will be assigned to pradeep so I clicked on it, so it uh, it will be it will be assigned to uh, Pradeep. One second. Yeah, so it is assigned to Pradeep Patel. Now what I'll do, I'll log into log in with the Pradeep's Pradeep's credentials. So I can see the uh, review references task is assigned to Pradeep. And uh, one more feature we have developed in this uh, dashlet is like, if uh, if that dashlet is not having access, if for example, a user is not a part of admin group and still a user is trying to add that dashlet uh, onto his or her dashboard. So he will get a message like, uh, you must be a member of uh, administrator group to view the, all the in-flight workflows. So, that's, uh, that's it, I guess, from my end. If any questions are there, uh, those are welcome. Quick question, what was the hardest part of the project? Yeah. Yeah, Richard, you were saying something? Yes, uh, what was the hardest part of the project? Hardest part of the project was, uh, you know, uh, you know, get, uh, getting, uh, getting all these uh, in-flight workflows uh, into, into, um, into one, at one place, like in one control, in one website controller. That was the kind of hardest part. What uh, we have done, we have used some Alfresco uh, out-of-box API in order to get that. So we used the code also which was uh, already there uh, at Alfresco and we made it work according to this specific functionality. Yeah, creating yeah. Alfresco workflows is not something that's uh, very easy to do, uh, especially if you yeah. want to create by multiple parameters. Uh, I often find this issue a bit limiting when I have customer requirements that want to have a kind of a filtered view on multiple process properties, for example. It's not something that you can easily do. Uh, in the past, I, for example, have done indexing on uh, workflow data just to make it possible or make it easier. And I can mm -hmm. understand how it's uh, potentially a difficult uh, task for your project. 
yeah yeah thanks Axel. yeah so okay. uh, that's that's it uh, from my end. thank you thank you as well thank you rupesh for joining thank you and yeah, the next project, as I mentioned, is uh, Francesco uh, from Alfresco, the other one of the other Alfrescos, uh, Francesco's from Alfresco. And after that, the next project uh, we will hear is also from Francesco, but it's actually the Francesco Corti that's already on the call. So Francesco Malagrino, please start. And after that, we have Francesco Corti or Siju. I don't know if he's going to join uh, about their project, but yeah. Hi, all. Uh, can you see my screen? Not yet. Now I think yes. Yeah. So yes. I create um, an app on uh, Alfresco process service that uh, is uh, integrated with Salesforce. So we start, we start the process. And uh, you select, uh, if you have more than uh, one client, you select uh, the account on, uh, of, say, of the account of Salesforce. And then I can retrieve uh, some information from Salesforce. And for example, I can modify something. On from activity, then you complete the task. Uh, this is just uh, for showing all the information, and so there is also the change. And then you complete, and uh, the modification that uh, I do with Alfresco Process Service uh, will be in automatic as well on uh, Salesforce. So if I log in. I will see my modification as well. So, second, point, and um, I can see. For example, the modification of the fax number, and uh, I don't remember what else I modify. I think the C code is modified. Um, so that is the app, and if you want, I can hear on uh, GitHub uh, uh, there is uh, the code that I use for making this uh, app on uh, Alpha Process Service. And <clears throat> that's really all by my side. Quick question. Quick question. Uh, what are you, you have an echo. You have an echo. Uh, yes. Someone has an echo with, with the with the Okay, let's check if it's gone. Let's check if it's gone. No, still. Uh, whoever has YouTube open, uh, with mic, please close it. In, in, in any case, I, I see that Francesco left. Uh, now probably is here, but I would like to thank him first of all because it's, uh, because it's uh, an interesting process on the process side. I have one question uh, about licenses. So I, I imagine that you need the license or a trial license on the APS side to make it work. But what about the Salesforce uh, side? Do you need uh, a so it does exist a trial license to you? Hang on, hang on. Hang on, we're we're getting a pretty bad echo. I think somebody, um, Francesco, are you screen sharing by any chance? Is this other? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I will stop. So. Yeah, if you can stop screen share, that might do it. I think I stop it. Let's see if I hear myself. So I hear the background, but it's uh, not as loud as before. <laughs> okay, it's back. Um, I think I've seen you have YouTube open. Can you please close YouTube? I close it. 
well, okay, now, now it's okay. I think we should go over to the next just to uh, skip uh, the problems. Um, <laughs> thank you, Francesco. Um, the next project would be uh, Alfresco Process Services CI CD uh, sample. Uh, this is a project uh, by C. Jude Joseph and Francesco Corti uh, from Alfresco. You all know Francesco, uh, but C. Jude also joined the call. Yes, let um, me briefly introduce uh, uh, just the project, then I will leave the mic to Siju that uh, did the majority of the job, and uh, I'm happy also to introduce him because uh, Siju is a, a, a nice guy, and I enjoy a lot working with him on the on the activity stuff, and in particular on the test uh, uh, environment. Uh, Siju, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, it's nice, nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. Yeah. So do you want to take the mic? Because we don't see you. I don't know if, uh, if yeah, you have a problem. For some reason, um, Hangout says my camera is not working, so I can't come online. But uh, the mic is working, so I can, I can um, start off. No, pro no problem, no problem. If you want to take the, uh, the description, I will be happy to give you support. But you don't need any support. In any case, we work together on the project. Please go ahead. I'm, I'm happy to see you. So. Right. Can you see my screen? Yes. OK. So just to give a um, brief introduction, the idea was like to come up with some working examples of a CI CD process that people usually have to follow for the Alfresco process service. It means um, like for a long time, activity development was just XML, but with the introduction of the web modeler and all the associated components, such as forms, decision tables, um, there's a lot of components that needs to be tested and the de developments happening in different areas, like one in the web and any Java code that you have to develop in the Eclipse. So it was about coming up with some guidance for our customers and prospects um, that can use it. So basically, during the hackathon, we created two projects. One is a test users um, that is available in this Git repo. Um, it has um, a lot of helper classes that can download um, process um, components from your running instance of Alfresco process web, um, web application. Um, also, a lot of uh, assert utils. And then there's also a working example that shows how to unit test a user task. It's basically various components of a BPMN process. So um, let me open my Eclipse. Um, so before that, let me quickly show you the the process, um, the, yeah, the Eclipse. So these two projects we have created, the test utils, basically that what it does is there are some util classes that can download um, the resources from a running instance of activity. If you want to, like if you are modeling change, um, your workflow here, making changes, and if you want to unit test without you having to manually download it, the process or without having to manually download the whole application, um, you can just do it from the Eclipse. So. I've done. So this is the utils project, and there's an example project. Um, <clears throat> so, so we developed this test application containing all these processes, some with a decision table, gateway. So each are very small processes, but each example shows how to unit test this component. Um, so if you look at the unit test cases, you'll see a lot of test classes explaining how to unit test each of these processes. And what happens when you do a unit test is it downloads um, it downloads the latest file from your environment. So you specify the app name and the process name that you want to test, and the utils will download that for you. I'm running the test against one process, and for some reason it's failing. So you see there's an old pointer exception. Um, yeah. So. <clears throat> so, um, and then, like an example is a user task process. Say, I have a user task process. I want to, like, I'm mod modeling something. The, the, there is assertions to test that the user task always has one day. So, if I change something to two days and just save it and forget to update my unit, oh, I run it, like the user task test, where I have, I have the assertion to say that assertion is one day. And if I run it again, should fail. You can see it has failed. And the due date is correct. Expected is seven, and the actual was two days. So I'll have to change my unit test before I commit this to the source code. So change it, run it again. It works. <coughs> then um, so. 
these two projects are available on the GitHub. And then uh, we have also developed a bunch of CI CD uh, examples that you can, like the next step of checking in from a check in, it triggers a um, Jenkins process which pushes everything into our factory, um, then can be downloaded. And like a job file will be created if there are Java classes that you use in your process that gets deployed to the lib folder of your running uh, process service instance. And um, any applications that you check in will be down, um, exported and deployed to the next environment of your choice um, that you configure in Jenkins. So that's the whole thing. Any questions? I have one question. Yeah. Any plan to this project? Sorry, um, can you repeat that question? Any plan to use that project uh, and there are the, this experimentation, this project in, uh, for example, you that you support the clients, the customers, or uh, in a um, concrete uh, environment and production environment. So, in development environment, uh, do you do you do you have any plan to use this in practice? Yeah, I mean, this is this is done as a working example to help our customers' prospects. So I expect this to be used by customers and prospects in the real production environment. Yeah, this is this is based on my experience. So the the reason is that it, it can be done, but there's no working examples. That's the fact. So all the customers and prospects are trying hard, like coming up with various options. The idea is, like from my experience, I've done this in the past. So just come up with some working example, make it available in the community, so that others can. Um, save time rather than trying to reinvent the whole wheel. Thank you very much. Really enjoy to work with you on this. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you as well. Um, if you unshare your screen, then uh, we can go over to the next project. Uh, we have about four projects left, if I see it correctly. Uh, the next one, I think we'll have to go back to Mikkel again. Uh, for the Keensoft project about the Alfresco Share ADF components. After that, uh, we have the rapid application development experimentation using ADF with Eugenio Romano. So if Eugenio is going to join, uh, then we can uh, continue after Mikkel has presented the Share ADF components by Keensoft. So Mikkel, if you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Thank you, Axel. So at least they can speak about uh, something uh, I have worked on. <laughs> uh, let me just, yeah, this uh, this was the the project. The initial idea was to 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 port Sare uh, Alfresco Share functionalities that often our clients are asking for, and to port that to the new Alfresco development framework. So we we start with a very li uh, long list, but we end up with just <laughs> the one model. Uh, but it was very uh, very good to to do the all the path to because now uh, I think we we got the the right knowledge to to do again for more complex uh, functionalities from Sher like for example the managed rules and and so on so we started with this uh, AOS uh, integration in in Sher to port exactly the same functionality so uh, mainly the the project is about uh, uh, publishing this model, which is uh, published in NPM, and it's called the uh, NG2 Alfresco House of Edit Online. And if we go quickly for the very um, simple steps to to use it, uh, we we start from a, a cost, uh, I mean from an EDF application from generated with German, which is uh, from the uh, Alfresco guys generator. And we install all the dependencies there, and then we install our our model there. We, then we need to extend the, our application root model in order to import this this one, this our model. And uh, no, lastly, um, we are next to, to the last one. Uh, we need to put, to put, uh, to configure. Sorry, in the files component uh, HTML template, we need to configure another action uh, like this. And and lastly, we need to implement this method. Uh, in our, uh, in this case, in this application file component uh, controller. So uh, as well, I wanted to to point that uh, it's uh, our also published on GitHub, so you can check the code, the actual implementation. It's quite simple, so you can, hopefully you can check and also maybe uh, improve. 
So now I wanted to let me see if I can just change this to my video player so we can see a very quick demo. I did a video because I'm not a Windows guy, so I have to do it from VirtualBox. So first we start from a, a 1.0 version uh, sample uh, document, which we want to make sure first that everything is working fine just from, from share. So we, we add some content to, to this document and we go back to share. And the, the view is not uh, is, is not refreshed, but uh, behind the scenes, Alfresco has made the, the version and has locked the document because we, we saved. So now if we just close the document and refresh the page, just take some time because of my virtual box, the, because of the record, my desktop application and all of that. <laughs> but hopefully we will have a new version with our content. So now if we go to the ADF application, just follow with the same various steps that we have seen before. Uh, and if we just navigate to the same document, We got our new action that we can execute. And yes, we need to check that we have exactly the same behavior as from share. So we want to just add some more content to it and check it again. After saving, we can actually uh, notice any difference here because the viewer uh, doesn't render uh, these kind of files. We need to do transformation to PDF to PDF so we can check in share that we got the content and that we got the, the version created, but it's locked. So when we close the office client again, we hopefully it can miss because it's a video. <laughs> I was telling you, you the same <laughs> So that's pretty all the the work we done is quite simple and it looks like quite simple, but it was not so simple to do it. And now hopefully we can make many more models like this. And that's all. Uh, before any question, I would like to tell you, first of all, to thank all of you and Kinsa for the contribution because it has been really appreciated for several uh, uh, reason and uh, believe me, it, this uh, this is an example of great contribution that has been highlighted also from the management of Alfresco. So thank you for for doing that. Thanks, Frank, Francesco. For, I'm glad to hear what you said. Thank you. Hey, Jen, you do confirm this? Do you appreciate this? <laughs> yeah, it's a nice project. Uh, but about uh, the things of uh, rendering uh, the. The PowerPoint uh, files inside ADF uh, uh, depends which version of uh, ADF you are using. Because uh, in the last one of the last version, we have added the, the possibility to call the rendition service and convert the PowerPoint and the words in uh, PDF files. Uh, yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, it's <laughs> it's one eight zero, and it's got like a nice button to convert the, the document to PDF, and then it, it worked. But because uh, I had the, the you know the F5 button uh, next to me with sir. I, I, I do like this, but I wanted to do like um, I wanted to show the, the version level, and that was the only thing missing in, in EDF, so that's why I, I did it in, in share. But I mean, I, I have nothing to, to say against the <laughs> no worry. No, it was a, was a really nice project uh, as we also some days ago on Twitter. Nice, yep. Thank you as well from my side, Mikkel. Um, as I mentioned before, next project would be Eugenio Romano. Before I give it over to him, uh, the project after that is the ADF chat component from Concentric. And I think that uh, we will have, uh, let me just see the uh, Kintu and uh, what's uh, uh, from Concentric going to join. So. Uh, if you guys join, then we can continue after that. And now I hope to see a nice project demo from Eugenio. Okay. So, can you see my screen now? Can you see the DF project? Yes. yes. Okay. 
So this project is about uh, um, try to create a sort of um, rapid application development with the uh, app. And um, as you can see in the left, we have a sidebar where you can choose some components. And uh, if you, for example, choose the toolbar component, you can customize the title. And you see that uh, it's showing the example here. And if, for example, you can add those uh, document list. It's going to render a document list here. And uh, for example, you can change uh, uh, through this editor uh, some of uh, the key. Or for example, we can change just the text or one of the columns. As you can see here on the top left, we changed the, the title of uh, this column. You can also change uh, where this uh, document list is pointing. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this one is an example how you can create a sort of uh, rapid application development with the ADF. And um, yeah, you can have also other uh, component here. For example, you can, I don't know, if we refresh it, let me refresh it because there is no enough space. Uh, you can add the tag list. These are the tags that are present at the moment inside uh, my content service. And uh, so on, you can do other times and things. So basically it's that, our project for the hackathon. Try to give a possibility to customize uh, ADF uh, at the moment, uh, the limit of uh, this thing are, uh, I think, about the layout. So we could give more uh, uh, possibility to choose a different layout and where to put these kind of uh, components. And sure that, it, that we should also provide a way to save uh, this new layout that, uh, after that you have created it. Nice. Do you have any plans, Eugenio, to put this in the next release, or is it too early to, to say it? <laughs> no, <laughs> we don't have a plan to put in any release this thing. But if you want to try it, it's inside of uh, one of the branch of uh, IDF. And mm -hmm. uh, you, if you want, you can, uh, you can uh, switch on this branch and uh, play with it. Yes, I want to try it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> It is very impressive to see how much ADF has matured since BCon. You know, in six months, it's sure come a long way. Yeah, the guys inside the team uh, did a really good job. OK, thank you, Eugenio. Um, the next project, as I mentioned, is the ADF chat component from Concentric. Uh, we have. Uh, let me see if I can uh, pronounce it correctly, Kintu Barot on the call um, as a web session. And the last project after that will be by Boris Michias. Uh, so Boris, if you're going to join, uh, the time is now. And over to you guys at Concentric to explain and showcase to us what you did in the hackathon. Yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, you guys can hear me? Yes, perfectly. Okay. I'm sharing my screen. All right, so we built a ADF chat component uh, during hackathon. It's uh, basically uh, what is happening. Like you know, we have to we have to like you know need to communicate when we basically work with Alfresco. Uh, at that time, like we have to basically go out from our window, and we have to use third party component for chat. So it's better, you know, if we can have like. Uh, chain component within Alfresco so that you know like users can use that so what we did like we have um, we have to like retain the content and metadata you know for the uh, future in case if you need to basically reference the chat history and uh, as I mentioned you know to overcome the limitation of any third party chat component we can do that uh, I'm quickly basically going through the architecture and then you know Kinto will basically take over the uh, coding part so what we have done is uh, we have basically uh, uh, splitted our architecture into three parts. The first one is the ADF, uh, the UI component. The, in the backend, we have Alfresco repository. 
and in between the middle layer is our push notification and for that like we have used a framework called atmosphere which is basically helped us you know for the websocket communication between two users so how it goes is the moment you know user one is uh, sending any message it's basically you know using this service to the alfresco repository stores that and then the message is being delivered to user two to make sure that you know we complete the full cycle and we have this uh, multiple you know plan the next plans like you know we can have like group communication between multiple parties we can do document sharing in the alfresco document and then chatbots so i'm basically going through the demo now So I'm just chatting with Raul. Right. So it's the um, simple demo chat. So our main core, main core part was, you know, the uh, to preparing the architecture, which was like, um, you know, behind this uh, right now the simple chat application. And um, I'll basically hand over to Kintu, who can basically, you know, uh, browse through the code. Okay, as you have seen, as Bhushan have explained that uh, architecture is divided in three parts. Uh, ADF component, it is for basically for a front end part and the push notification that we have used atmosphere framework for the uh, for handling the uh, uh, handling the uh, socket uh, communication between two users. And uh, this is a fresco part where we are storing the uh, conversation of the users um, and its metadata also. So let me uh, show you the code. Let me show you the alfresco, uh, alfresco part first, where we have uh, created two simple web scripts. One is to store the web uh, conversation, and other one is to retrieve the conversion. You can see these are the two web scripts yet. Here we are. Uh, here we are uh, storing the conversation, and the other one is to other one is to uh, retrieve the old conversation. Okay, these uh, web scripts are uh, handling the mess, uh, handling the conversation in the a JSON format. So uh, whenever push notification will uh, will be called by the ADF component, you know, message will be uh, sent to the uh, message will be uh, sent to the Alfresco, and that means uh, this web script will be called and message will be stored in Alfresco. And then after successful callback, the notification uh, the uh, acknowledgement will be sent by this web script to push notification and then that message will be uh, sent to another user means user at the other end this is a com uh, adf part here we have developed our component from here we are making call to the uh, uh, push notification application where we have uh, customized several uh, REST APIs from which we are uh, getting the online users from the Alfresco and uh, displaying it to the ADF component. 
so you know this is uh, this is a basically a, a platform we are providing and we want other developers to take it to the next level so we are uh, putting it for the other developers as well we'll be sharing the uh, gitlab link to the community let me show you the uh, customization we have made to the uh, atmosphere framework so these are the java classes where we have uh, made our customizations this is the uh, main class from where we are uh, just uh, referencing and calling other uh, classes as well. So uh, this is all about the uh, development part that we have done so far. It is very basic for now, but uh, we will take it to the next level. And this is the GitLab link where uh, other developers can find the code. So can, can you confirm, uh, uh, sorry, did you finish it? Because I have a couple of questions coming, one from uh, YouTube and one from me. So do you, the first question is, uh, if you confirm that it will be public and open source, or, for, or if it's in your private uh, repository. Uh, and the second question comes from uh, YouTube, uh, from Mario Romano. Uh, which is the uh, the style sheet system that you are using? So, if you are using Material Design or not for the chat uh, for the user interface. So the first answer is uh, we. This is a public. Uh, we will keep it for uh, all the developers. I I would request you to uh, repeat the second question, please. Yes. So, uh, so if it will be public, uh, just to complete the first question, it could be great if you could add the link to the project list, uh, because of course then we can also get more people on board. Uh, I repeat the second question. The second question is: Are you using Material Design for the chat? Which is the style sheet that you use? Just in case. No, no, we are not using Material Design, but we are uh, just uh, developing Alfresco only. <laughs> With ADF styles and all it. Okay, thank thank you very much. This uh, question comes from uh, YouTube channel from Mari Romano and Mari Roitz in the ADF team. So you should be happy to hear. Thank you for your presentation, and I would like also to thank you for being also a physical uh, hacker room, uh, the first in India, as I, as I'm aware. So thank you for joining the hacker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You got a lot done in one day. Very cool. How how many person? How many people you you have uh, there from Concentric? Uh, uh, right now we are having uh, five people. And in this project we had total of ten people. It's okay. a, it's a, it's a big effort, uh, Richard and the uh, Concentric guys. Hi guys, nice to meet you. So this was a team effort for sure. You're welcome. And, and nice. we've seen a number of your team in the uh, community forums. It's nice to see you in person, and we look forward to continuing to work together. Thanks very much, Richard. Thank you. Could be great to have you, also, of course, also to the DevCon. I hope that we will yeah, have we, the chance to see. We are definitely uh, looking ways. forward. Yeah, and uh, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for presenting your results. And we only have one project left. Um, we actually have someone joining from the past apparently today, uh, Boris Merias. Uh, he's going to present his project test backups, automatic recovery verification. And as soon as his image is visible, you will know what I mean by my remarks. So Boris, go ahead. Yes, um, can you hear me, guys? Uh, thanks for the introduction, Axel. Um, yes. I, I would like to start first uh, talking about uh, the, the room that we have in Brussels. Um, usually, we were having the kind of the crowded uh, room in the hackers, um, in the uh, global hackathon. We did that twice, but this year we were completely beaten up by the Indians. So, for the guys from India, congratulations, you have a, a very very nice uh, room. So this is good. This is good that the thing is, is growing up. Um, so, but one thing about Brussels uh, actually is that we had two companies, or people from, coming from two companies actually for the for the hackathon. So I think that was a good thing. It was not just one company putting uh, people there. 
And it was actually my last uh, activity at CIRB uh, for Fresco because I'm, I'm, I'm switching companies now. I'm joining a very nice company from uh, PostgreSQL community. You will see that very soon on my LinkedIn. Uh, so this is uh, good news for me. I hope also for the community. And uh, also something else. So we had in, in thank you, Francesco. We had in Brussels people from Xenit. People from Xenit, they, they travel just to be with us and to share the knowledge uh, and, and, and the beers and, and the pizza. So it was great having those guys. So thanks to, to the guys from Senate, also because they help us in the post uh, hackathon activity to carry on with the spirit. So thanks also for, the, for that. Uh, so more about Brussels. So you know you're, you have the DEF CON in Portugal now in January. For the people coming from the US uh, or from um, uh, South America, like Douglas, I know you're not listening now, but when you're watching the video, if you come to the DevCon uh, next year, stay two weeks more and come to FOSDEM. FOSDEM is in Brussels. Two weekends after that, it's about 8,000 uh, hackers or developers or people related to, to open source and free software. Uh, so that's, that's the FOS, Free Open Source Developers European Meeting. But it's not just the weekend. Uh, which is the, the first weekend in, 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 in February, that was three and four. It is because there are so many people coming here. They, they do events before uh, FOSDEM. So there we have uh, events, and then you have events coming after FOSDEM. So there is going to be plenty of uh, activities around. So you go to Portugal for DEF CON, you stay in Portugal for the weekend. Then you go to, um, I don't know, if you want to go to Barcelona or something for a week or something, or you want to see something else. And then you get to Brussels. And uh, we, we, can, we can share some knowledge, uh, of course, and beers. So, uh, Foster, so that was all I, I wanted to say. <laughs> Boris, uh, I have one question for you. But uh, I, 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 in your new position, are you going to attend the, the DEF CON? You must say yes. Huh? This is my plan. I'm planning to attend DEFCON. This is still in the agenda. So I hope to see you all there for the next hackathon. Ah, yes, the hackathon. So I have to present the project. So uh, automatic testing. So, uh, do I have to share my screen now? Yes. That was a question. Another question related to what I just said? No? Just if you're going to start presenting your project anytime soon. I wondered if you hack. Like, what, like did, you, uh, did you work on something? <laughs> what? Well, what was the question? Boris is the social lubricant that makes the hacker room productive. <laughs> yeah, well, OK. So um, in that room, we had uh, three projects. So the guys from Xenit were working in two different stuff. One is the uh, Care for Alf uh, thing. And Eunice was working in something else that I can't remember. But he was really concentrated and working with those guys. And we were working in, in this automatic testing. Yeah, OK, share my screen. You can see my screen. You can see it now, probably. And can you see the, the um, yes. We can see your screen. Yeah. So um, here in this in this terminal, so I'm connected now via v VPN to the server that we were using in our um, um, uh, company. Uh, so we have uh, an SRV, SRV Alfresco of data, just to show you that. Um, for instance, here the um, it's actually a symbolic link to one of the instances. A survey instances at Fresco Governor. So this is one of the instances that we recover here. So in this server, we can take from different uh, instances of a Fresco. So uh, let me see the three. So you can see now from this test, we use two. One is called Notero, the bots, and the other one is called a Fresco Governor. So we use the data from all of data, the database is coming from the backup, and then some configuration stuff and some specific things for the for the web apps, like uh, Notero have some special things for um, uh, sorted and all this stuff. But in this case, we recover Alfresco Governor. Um, and so it's running. And what we did is to recover the database. And from our team, he said, we need to be careful about uh, GDPR. This is something to protect data for privacy, which is going to start really working in Europe the next 25th of May. So next hour day, remember, is going to start this thing. So we have to obfuscate data. 
So I'm going to switch now to my instance here. Uh, I'm going to log in. Here's passport one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If we, because until six, it was too easy to, to get it. Not, until nine is much better. So I, I log in. And as you saw, I log in as B, B Mages, B Mejias. But my name is Hert van den Sten. This is because uh, my name was changed in the process of recovering the, the data. So I'm going to search for some people. This is the only thing that I'm going to show you now. So this is one of the, Jackson is one of the test users from Alfresco that always comes. Uh, this one is now called Anatola VS. And you also have uh, this girl called uh, Witcher. And we it's called Jan uh, de Galais. So de Galais, I don't know how to pronounce it. So anyway, the thing is that it, this is not taking like a database with names of uh, music groups or, or, or actors, which is also possible. This is just switching the last name. And so you don't obfuscate the data to test your recovery. So the idea you're not going to pass some information from, from production. It's just very basic stuff here to just happen when we will start to do this. Something else that it, it does, um, it's verify, and so this is where, where I have my test, is to verify the, the content store. So you, you get some logs, I'm going to do it now manually. So I call this Python script, which is going to connect to the database, and it's going to go to this content store, and it's going to check whether we're correctly recover. Uh, it's running now, but okay. It checked 3,705 files. Everything is okay. Missing and no file has kind of corruption. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run, if it works, uh, mess it. Uh, yeah, so this one generated some mess, very small, on the content store. So I run my validation stuff again. And you'll see that for the total files, I have only 101 validated, so four files are wrong. These are not okay. It tells you the size is wrong. So you get the, the full URL, your URL. And this is the, the original size that is expected, and this is the actual size that it got. And these are orphan nodes, meaning that the, the files actually um, are not there anymore. So it means that your recovery wasn't good, just because I messed it up with this thing. So this is what we actually do. So what I have to do to restore another instance is uh, to run something like, like this, put it in a, in a cron job. Let me see. So for instance, this one is to restore not at all the other instance, and then it's to restore the Alfresco governor. So what is going to happen there is I pass one of these profiles, and in the profile you have configuration files. That I'm not going to show you now, because those are not obfuscated and have some data. Which is going to tell from where which server it has to uh, take the original backup and which kind of database is going to use for the restore so it's not using production, of course. At the moment, the content store and it also obfuscates the, the data. I think I'm going to stop sharing and go back to the 30s. Um, right. um, in. Yes, that's it. Nice, nice. Thanks. Sorry, I showed too many. Uh, how you say uh, console? Uh, I usually do it like that. I'm not so fancy with the uh, and all this stuff. I will get more help in my next uh, hackathon project. Command line makes is Command easy to follow. I think that follow it's a very useful that's... tool for people. It's very common to need to do the. If if you're not doing if you're not doing regular restores from your backups, how do you know your backups are good? So I would hope more people would use those that script. Yeah, yeah, I think it's important to test. Yes, yeah, because if, if it's working today, it can work tomorrow, day after tomorrow. But as soon as you change something, or somebody in your organization change something like a for SSH connection, things can go wrong. So test your backups. That's a message. So thank you for being the last presenter today. Um, I think we've covered everyone that wanted to attend today, if I have not missed anyone. Um, so in total, I think we had about 21 projects this time around. Uh, if I remember the numbers correctly, Francesco, maybe you have the more correct numbers uh, since you are the statistics keeper. Yes, we were 26 uh, oh. projects uh, signed. Then uh, we moved. Uh, 
Uh, some of them, of course, uh, will not be confirmed during the hackathon, but it happens, we all know. But again, uh, you know, guys, I don't know your opinion, but what I'm most excited here to see is that we are continuing to work on the pure ACM environment, but we are starting to deal also with uh, the processes and, of course, also on the ADF staff uh, uh, that is uh, uh, really enhancing. So um, I'm very glad to see more projects like that and more events like the Hackathon. Yeah, this was actually, I think, one of the first events where we actually had a combined event with the process of guys, the ADF guys, and the, uh, let's say, traditional ECM guys from the first perspective, now that the Alfresco product portfolio has grown uh, to more projects. And I hope we will see uh, the, uh, a couple of those people at the next uh, DEF CON as well. Uh, I think even last uh, BCON, we mostly had just ECM guys with Alfresco. And if you can keep this diversity up or even increase it, uh, would be really much appreciated. And I hope all the people that attended this time in those areas, BPM and ADF, uh, might help to bring the message to their communities to join us or join the wider Alfresco community and uh, participate and collaborate in that. Wait, we can't end. Roy Weatherall didn't send us in a, his his video uh, of his progress with Content Craft. Uh, yes, I Craft update. Yes, and you're right. I asked it to Roy. I don't want to say that that, that Roy didn't send me this, but did it, Roy? It's a. Uh, it's not available, and uh, of course, uh, we will have it soon. But I, I'm in touch with him about it. I, I'm looking, Roy's next hackathon project needs to be to create Minecraft ADF components so the content <laughs> can be brought into ADF applications. OK, that would be strange here, yeah, but. Uh... <laughs> Technicality. Technicality, yeah. I mean, first of all, I think the first thing you could uh, focus on is making his video recording available as a video. Oh, now I see. OK. You are frozen for one second, uh, Axel. Yeah. Least, OK. The wireless is a bit uh, yeah. sticky. So I think the first priority for him could be to have a content craft inception like have his uh, demo uh, video available within Minecraft uh, using the Minecraft APIs to our fresco. Nice. That would be cool. <laughs> For anyone who's not aware of Content Craft and Minecraft, uh, Roy Weatherall is an Alfresco engineer currently located in uh, Sydney, Australia. And basically, every one of his hackathon projects since I think 2012 has been focused around Minecraft and Alfresco and integrating those tools. And this time, he basically does it off his old project uh, where he didn't work on for two years and uh, continue to make it work with the newest version of Minecraft. So for anyone who's not aware of the history of our hackathons and Roy. OK, so I guess that brings us, uh, at least from my side, to the end of the demonstration uh, of the session. I don't know if Kristen or uh, Francesco, you have uh, additional things you want to cover. Just to some reminders, so um, again, most of this information, if you missed any of the sessions or if you have questions, most of these people can be found in the community in the Collaborate section. Um, you can go to that Global Hackathon page and kind of see what people have put there. Next week, we have two events. We have Tech Talk Live on the 11th with Tony De La Fuente, and then Francesco is buying people beers in London on the 12th. Uh, so if you're local to London, we'd love to meet you for uh, alfresco alfresco is what we're calling it so some some outdoor dining with alfresco um, that can be found on our meetup page call for papers is only open until October 23rd so you have about three weeks left to get your to get your paper in uh, again we have a lot of submissions and we'll, we're looking for a variety of content for a variety of experience so if you want to do something for newbies if you want to do something for experienced folks if you want to do you know ADF ECM, VPM, lots of acronyms to choose from. So we would love to see what you've uh, what you've got. Um, again, you can find me and Francesco in the community anytime you need us. I think that's it for me. Thank you, guys. Kristen said uh, everything and nice as usual. So, uh, Richard, do you want to share the last call, the last the greeting? Thank you, guys. See you soon. Uh, it's great hackathon. Great to see the projects. If the event keeps growing, it's going to get more competitive. Who gets to demo? So. <laughs> Someone asked 90 minutes some, of cool sessions. 
some, someone asked me if there are some rewards. I don't think we should make it real challenging with the rewards, but uh, it's something we could discuss. So my, my reward was getting to know more people and uh, getting some interesting feedback on the product. Uh, we had an interesting yeah. conversation about the way we do versions and, and release naming and things like that, uh, really useful. So I appreciate being able to interact with everybody. Okay, guys. One, well, one last we'll remark I would have is, uh, sorry, Kristen. I didn't Go know. ahead. One last remark I would have is, if you are a developer within the United States or let's say North America, or Western time zone, and uh, are willing or looking forward to uh, working with the Alfresco community, those events are here for you and you can join it. And we would hope to have more contribution or more community members join from those areas. We had a great showing from uh, Asia as well as Europe, but uh, in North America, we had usually have a, a lot fewer people, mostly our first people. So if you're watching this and are of this region, please join us in the next event. Absolutely. Plus one. Right. We'll talk to you next week then. Bye everybody. Bye.